Hey everybody, Dinosaur George from DinosaurGeorge.com. Uh, Nadav, my friend from Tel Aviv, Israel, wrote and said, how can you determine if a uh, fossil is male or female? Really good question, Nadav. That's really good. Uh, the answer to it is, in some cases, we just can't. Uh, one of the difficulties with dinosaurs is there's not a definitive uh, differentiation between male and female that we're aware of. There's been some speculation that looking at the skull, we can find that in some cases there are members of uh, like the duckbills and the, the ceratopsians where one has a very ornamented skull and the other is relatively plain. Well, we can look at modern animals as a guide and realize that that's common in the animal kingdom today. And in most cases, it is the male who's more ornamented because he uses that to try to attract a mate. So in some cases, I think we're pretty sure that when you, like Parasaurolophus is a perfect example, when you look at those guys, you go, wow, this one's got this gigantic crest and this other doesn't. So it's certainly possible that that's a, that's a way to d distinguish the two. I read a report uh, that they, somebody proposed that by looking at the base of the tail, at least on theropods like Tyrannosaurus rex, we may be able to determine that. There's some little bones that jut down from the base of the tail called chevrons. And on some of the specimens, they're missing a chevron. There, there was never one in one particular place. And on others, it's there. Well, this proposal basically is that because eggs are passing out of the base of the tail, or near the base of the tail, that extra chevron, if you, if you had it there, it would interfere with the egg laying process. And so they deducted that that would then mean that that must represent a female. The male, of course, doesn't, doesn't concern himself with egg laying, so he can have that extra chevron. Uh, but again, this is speculation. We just don't know for sure. I, I saw once where they extracted what they, um, what they found to be medullary bone, which is a buildup of a, of a very specific kind of bone tissue that female birds have when they're getting ready to lay eggs. Well, they found it in a tyrannosaur. And so that could potentially give us clues that, hey, look, at least we know this particular one is a female. But again, it's really difficult to say with any certainty. Okay, Jason from Hondo, Texas, my hometown. Uh, Jason, it's great to hear from you, by the way. Jason says that Jason, Madeline, Hunter, and Jason are finding a lot of shark teeth north of Hondo in the Hondo Creek. Why? Well, first of all, Jason, do me a favor. Tell your mom and dad I said hello. Um, they're very good friends. They've always been very good friends to me. Your dad has been one of the nicest people, and he's been so nice to me and my family. I just want to tell you what a great guy I think he is. And the same with your mom. Great people. Um, Here's why you and your family are finding shark teeth up there. At one time, Jason, uh, all of Hondo, most of Texas was covered by ocean. And of course, we had all the sea life you could ever imagine living here. Well, as the oceans receded and sediment began to cover the layers of dirt that held all the things like fish bones, shark teeth, uh, little seashells, that kind of stuff, those layers of dirt covered it. But things like the Hondo Creek uh, uncovered them. As water rushed through there and made the creek, it exposed and got down to the layer that represented the time when those animals were alive. So what you guys are finding, you're finding shark teeth that are probably 70 million, 68 million years old. Uh, imagine that. I mean, you are holding in your hand the tooth of a shark that was alive when Tyrannosaurus rex was alive. That's basically how far back that goes. So uh, I'm excited to hear you guys are finding them. You are literally finding pieces of history. It's very exciting, and uh, I can't tell you how glad I am to hear from you. And please say hello to everybody in Hondo for me. Uh, Hondo Al's rule. <laughs> okay, uh, Brendan from uh, Morris, New York. Uh, I'm going to New York City next week, Brendan, to meet with History Channel. I mean, with Discovery Channel and National Geographic. So, uh, wish me luck, brother. Okay, since I was a little kid, I started to like dinosaurs. I was just wondering, did Tyrannosaurus, Albertosaurus, and Tarbosaurus really prey on Titanosaurid sauropods? And if so, what evidence supports this hypothesis? These three big predatory dinosaurs certainly lived with some of the early uh, titanosaurs. Titanosaurs, for those of you that don't know, are some of the long-necked dinosaurs, but they're the ones that, that really made it into the, uh, into the very late Cretaceous. They were, they were pretty successful. 
Did, did these predators prey on them? Yeah, probably so, because they lived in the same environment with them. And if you have a giant predator and you have giant herbivores living in the same environment at the same time, then it is very uh, solid science to suggest that they preyed on them. Now, I am not aware of any direct evidence, which direct evidence would be finding a recognizable titanosaurid bone with a recognizable broken off tyrannosaurid tooth embedded in it. Those are the two things that give you definitive proof that one was eating the other. That doesn't necessarily tell us that they were hunting them. They could strictly have found the dead titanosaurid and, and fed off of it, scavenged off of it. But I am unaware of that. But I think it's a very solid bet that if they had the opportunity to kill a young titanosaurid, they certainly would. They probably wouldn't mess with the adults because they're too big. But certainly I think they were preying on the young. Okay, uh, Brennan from Edmond, Oklahoma. I love going to Edmond, Oklahoma. He said, I'm glad your surgery went well. Thank you. I'm still healing up. Uh, I had sinus surgery. That's why my head still sounds a little stuffy. Uh, he said, I'm nine years old and I want to be a paleontologist when I get older. I watch your tapes every day. That's very kind of you. I'm, I'm glad you do. And I'm glad to hear that you want to be a paleontologist. I bet you'll be a good one. He says, I was wondering what dinosaurs were in Hawaii. Uh, great question. Do you know Hawaii wasn't there during the age of dinosaurs. So we don't find dinosaurs on Hawaii. It was an island that was formed through volcanic activity that happened after the, the age of dinosaurs. So we don't find them there. Uh, he also wants to know, will my traveling exhibit ever come to Oklahoma? You better believe it will. Uh, my traveling exhibit, for those of you that are unaware of it, go to dinosaurgeorge.com and click on the uh, dinosaur exhibit page and uh, you'll see what it is. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, our plans are to travel all over North America with it. We're looking immediately at traveling some more locations in Texas. We open in Texas uh, October 15th uh, in San Antonio, but absolutely we're looking at Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Arizona as being the first three states that we'll probably focus on, but that could change. But go to my website, join uh, our mailing list. Uh, you can join it. Uh, look for the page that says free newsletter. Join that mailing list, uh, and that's how we come communicate where we're going to be. Okay, uh, and then a question from Nadav from Tel Aviv, Israel, wants to know what's more important to paleontology, geology or biology? Another brilliant, brilliant question, Nadav. Man, you hit some home runs with these things. Uh, man, that's a tough one. Without geology, we wouldn't understand the environment. We wouldn't understand where to look. We wouldn't understand anything about the, the individual time period. So that's an important one. But without biology, we wouldn't understand how the animals go together. We wouldn't understand how they breathe, how they interact. We wouldn't understand how they behave. Wow, if I had to say one of the two is the most important, Wow. From my perspective, it's biology because for me, I'm more interested in the animals themselves. Uh, to a paleontologist who goes out and digs, I would venture to say they would tell you, no, it's geology because if we don't know where to look, we're never going to find one for anybody else to study. So those are great, uh, those are great questions. Uh, man, I'd go with biology. All right, listen, that's it for today. For those of you who are unfamiliar with my website, it's dinosaurgeorge.com. There's a lot of stuff on there. Uh, if you'd like, sign up to follow me on Twitter. I always send out some tweets. As a matter of fact, last week I was uh, digging uh, or out looking at dinosaur footprints and I gave everybody on Twitter a heads up that I was going, which is kind of cool. Uh, so you can uh, follow me on Twitter. You can sign up for Facebook and follow me there. Also go to YouTube and type in Dinosaur George. I post a lot of stuff on YouTube. This video will make it on YouTube. Um, and again, uh, search my site. There's some cool stuff. I hope you enjoy it. While you're there, sign up to join our mailing list. Thank you guys so much for all the questions. For those of you whom I couldn't answer, I apologize. Uh, for you young kids out there, you make sure and practice your manners and you practice your reading. And uh, I will see you all again soon. Take care. See ya.